Okay. Um, in three, two, one, go. Hashtag Bangun Pilipinas. Blackwater would like to support our heroes of the front line who are risking their health and well-being to attend to COVID-19 patients. We aim to provide the frontliners of the Pasig City General Hospital hygiene kits which they can use daily. Blackwater, smell good, feel good. This webinar series is brought to you by Hoop Coaches International in cooperation with Blackwater. Smell good, feel good. <coughs> This coaching webinar series would like to give special thanks to the following. Samahang Basketball ng Pilipinas Coaches Commission Head, Coach Jong Yochiko. Basketball Coaches of the Philippines President, Coach Louis Gonzalez. God Skills Head, Coach Alan Ricardo. And Frontliner, Christopher Top Huyano. All right. Good evening. So, yeah, uh, our attendees are all here. So, galing. So again, uh, good evening, and um, we're so excited to have this um, first session with the coaches. I know we had one earlier with the Tileo players, but again, uh, joining us is our resident sports psychologist, who's uh, Bagul Ligo, uh, oh, Dr. Teddy Villasor. Good evening. Good evening, Coach. Coach Nash, Coach Ariel. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. And you know, I'll do the honors of introducing our uh, uh, special guests. For tonight, siyempre, um, uh, uh, representing our dear Blackwater Elite. Uh, it's a newly installed head coach of our uh, young franchise and uh, hoping to um, bring us to the promised land or uh, at least to the playoffs. So, yun sinasabi niya. Our champion coach in the um, NBA and in the collegiate tracks with the UAAP. And of course, um, former uh, uh, head coach of um, Talk It Tech's uh, Phone Pals in, or Katropa in the PBA. And um, we'd like to welcome uh, Coach Nash Rosella. Good evening, Coach. Hi, Coach Ariel. Good evening, uh, Doc Ted. Good evening, Dan. And good evening, Coach. To all our attendees, good evening. I am Coach. And of course, bago, bago, before we go to your presentation, um, would like to know about your coaching journey. How did you become a coach, or how you know? I we, we know that uh, uh, Rasella is a household name when it comes to basketball, sempre. And uh, how did you start off as a coach, and uh, how was your journey as a coach? Well, it, you know, the story was really funny. Yung, uh, back in 1998, I was working. Uh, corporate sa, sa banko. I was working with Citibank then. And then I, then I didn't see any future for, for myself sa banking industry. So I just decided to uh, call it quits, re resign. And then all of a sudden, uh, this uh, other professional league before in MBA, um, my opportunity na dumating. Uh, actually, that was Coach uh, Binky Favis who gave me that uh, uh, opportunity to start coaching. So, do nagsimula. And uh, up to now, uh, it has been, well, 20, 22 years uh, of coaching. And uh, masaya naman ako sa, sa 22 years ng pagko-coach. I'm sure that's the same way you feel, Coach Ariel. Yeah, so magkasabay pala tayo. I know, um, pareho tayong from Lasal. If they, uh, you know, yan lang misconception sa'yo ng uh, mga uh you know uh, basketball aficionados because of course uh all said we all know that your brother uh, all said coach all said came from ateneo but uh, idol kita no nasa lasal ke i call myself uh, no i call myself hybrid kasi nga uh, well I, I actually uh came from both uh studied in ateneo high school and then uh, uh lasal sa college uh Yo, then, so, then ano, halos, na coach. halos sabay. Yeah, oh, halos sabay tayo noon. And then I coached uh, San Beda for a while, uh, a season and a half during 2004 and 2005. And then, of course, FEU uh, starting 2012. All right. So, Coach Nas, of 
course, um, they're uh, waiting for your presentation. Uh, you know, this is one of your, uh, no, so the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, salamat, Coach Ariel and uh, Doc Ted. Um, Sempre, of course, I want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to share uh, a little bit of knowledge that I've, uh, kumbaga, naipon ko over the years nga, yung 22 years of coaching. Um, I, I really believed in uh, coaching the coaches. So uh, this is not the first time I'll, I'll be doing this. But Well, first time sa, sa mga webinar. But um, recently, I was also uh, able to do this uh, sa mga nearby provinces natin. Uh, just trying to um, share my knowledge kung ano yung konting alam natin uh, sa basketball. Um, Alam naman natin na lahat tayo. We, we, all start, we, we all started with this, di ba? Ako, nung 1998, I didn't really know much about basketball, especially the X and O's of it. Uh, but eventually, over the years, because again, because of the exposure that we've had with other coaches, uh, doon tayo nag-grow. So I think this is a good opportunity for my, not only for myself, but the other coaches as well to be able to share uh, with uh, the other coaches, especially the ones who are uh, starting out palang. So maybe some of the ideas here that I'll be sharing would be new to them. Eh, meron din dito, di ba, baka maging boring na for, for them because alam na, alam na nila itong ituturo ko. But uh, I guess right now, ang advice ko lang to all our attendees is uh, to be open uh, to whatever uh, I'll be sharing today. Uh, ganun naman. That's how you learn. You be open to uh, ideas, new, new or old ideas, and then just be able to filter it. Tapos tsaka kayo mamili kung ano yung tingin nyo na makakatulong uh, sa inyo. Um, siguro right. just to give, yeah, coach, siguro just to give the attendees an idea of what to expect dito sa, sa, sa gagawin ko ngayon. I'll just, I'll just be sharing, um, I, I just have five slides. Uh, parang, uh, just key, keynote presentation, just five slides, talk about it muna. And then later on, I, I have a, a eight-minute video uh, video clip. So papakita ko lang how, how we attack the transition and how we executed offensively when uh, we won the championship with FU in 2015. All right, coach. Excited kami dyan. Okay. Um, again, um, Kanina, Coach, uh, just a little bit of background. Again, for myself, um, yeah, nag-start ako sa MBA, 1998 until 2003 uh, with the Batangas Blades. Um, I might as well share na rin, Coach, uh, share, share my screen. Okay. Okay, Coach. Start broadcast. <clears throat> And then keynote. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Time out. Time out. Time out. Okay. Okay. So ito, ito yung topic for, for today, offensive transition and uh, mga offensive concepts. Um, so, siguro, while, while giving a little bit of background nung, nung experiences ko as a coach, siguro I'll try to connect it to uh, the of offensive concepts na dinaanan ko under those teams. So, so at least the, the, our attendees will have uh, an idea of what kind of exposure I had offensively dun sa, sa basketball over the last 22 years. So again, I started with uh, the MBA, uh, a little bit of exposure sa professional basketball. And during those times, in the late 90s and uh, siguro early on uh, in this century, usong-uso dati coach yung post and the uh, isolation place, okay? Because again, even the NBA, if you would follow, if you followed it before, dun sa mga mas may edad na sa atin, um, we, we, we all took advantage of the uh, illegal defense rule. So kaya, kaya rin nagkaroon ng mga post and isolation plays, okay? So that's, that's one uh, type of basketball na na-expose ako uh, nung mga panahon na yun. Okay, also... Um, sa MBA and even when I transitioned to uh, San Beda in 2004, I, um, 
I ran a, a motion type of offense. Um, kasi ever since I, I'm a believer of the motion offense, na I wanted five guys sharing the ball. Um, and then, uh, because that gives the defense um, an unexpected action. So, mas, kumbaga, in a way, for us coaches, it would be hard to scout for the opposing teams. So, yun ang aking exposure noon. Um, it started out as a three-out, two-in offense. Uh, actually, just a simple single-double action na continues for, for, for 20 four seconds. So, yun yung tinatakbo namin yun. And then, eventually, it, it, it evolved to a five-out offense. Um, also, um, after the MBA, I transitioned to the PBA. So, I, I was part of the PBA from 2003 up until now. Uh, ngayon sa Blackwater, I started out with Coach Chot Reyes. And back then, he was... Um, he was running this hybrid triangle offense. I call it a hy hybrid triangle because um, ang spots na finifil niya are the spots of the triangle offense. But instead of um, instead of taking advantage of the ball screens and the handoff actions, K coach shot was always uh, an action was opposite the ball. So hindi siya papunta sa bola. So I call it a triangle. A hybrid triangle na took advantage of quick movements and uh, screens, mga screening actions. Okay, aside from that hybrid triangle, starting 2008, uh, yung dribble drive offense, again, under coach shot sa token text, back, with token, back then with token text, and um, yung gilas natin. Okay, dribble drive offense. Another one is... Um, when Coach Jong took over, the Spurs, uh, Spurs offense, ang exposure, because the exposure ni Coach Jong really was the uh, San Antonio Spurs. I, I remember he had this um, time uh, observing the practices ng, um, ng San Antonio. And I, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure it's because of uh, his friendship with uh, Coach uh, Chip England. Okay, so kaya nagkaroon kami ng konti exposure sa Spurs offense. Okay, medyo marami yan, no? Oh, okay, oh, after... <laughs> Pero after, do, okay yan. Uh, Papa-explain lahat sa'yo yan, pamaya. <laughs> <laughs> medyo lang mahirap. Now, well, now well, uh, after uh, Coach Young, I, I also had um, exposure din sa flow offense um, or what we call the European ball screen offense. Um, I, I was under coach Tab Baldwin dun sa, sa Gilas. There was, I think, one or two years that I was under him sa Gilas, and this is something that also uh, we ran dun sa kanya. Now, going back to the, going back to the PBA, diba sabi ko, I, I, I coached in the PBA from 2003 up until 2000, and I think, 15 as an assistant coach. Okay, two different coaches and running different kinds of offenses. Okay, now in 2016 until 18, naging head coach ako ng Talk and Text. Okay, I took a break one year, uh, 2019. Okay, initially, syempre, when, when you get fired as a coach, it's not really, a, normally it's not an, a welcome, welcome development as a coach, di ba? Medyo malungkot na balita. But eventually... Uh, I saw it as a, as a blessing uh, in these guys because now, noong 2019, that was last year, I had um, exposure naman dun sa ating isang liga, yung MPBL. Uh, so, kumbaga, halos lahat nung, nung liga natin ngayon dito sa Pilipinas, nadaanan ko from the UAAP to the NCAA, the MBA back then, PBL, uh, now the M MPBL at saka yung PBA. So, everything was a blessing for me as a coach kasi nga, sa 22 years, iba-ibang klaseng liga yung nadaanan natin and those teams running different kinds of offenses. Okay? I was part of the national team also from two... I think when Coach Chot started in 2005 up until 2016, yung last... Uh, uh, the last coach was Coach Tab. Of course, during those years, 
except during the time of Coach Yang Yao and Coach Raiko Toroman. Yon, hindi ako naging uh, part ng mga yon. Okay, a lot of offenses along the way also, we've had exposure sa ibang, uh, kumbaga we call it the set place or mga set offenses. Uh, kaya again, sa YouTube makikita natin yan, even sa Twitter, if you follow a lot of coaches. Set offenses like the Horn series, uh, yung mga 1-4, floppy actions, triangle offense, of course, sila Coach Tim who which is run by Hinebrach under Coach Tim Cohn, the Princeton offense. So lahat yun, uh, nadaanan natin, nagkaroon tayo na exposure as a coach. Now, siguro ang advice ko ngayon to all our attendees is, well, actually you can run any type of offense. Okay, so depende yan sa inclination, what depends on your inclination, what kind of offense you like, depende sa mata mo, if you think this will, iba kasi sa mata lang kung magandang action, naiingganyo na sila itakbo. No? If you see that uh, as something that will work for you and your team, then go ahead and um, use it. Okay? But this is my only advice. Okay? Regardless of the type of offense you're running, okay, the, the key offensively is your execution. Okay? And how you take advantage of defensive breakdowns okay there will always be breakdowns dun sa defense okay there is no such thing as a perfect defense okay they cannot take everything away okay ang kailangan natin mahanap offensively is saan yung breakdown okay so yun lang ang kailangan natin offensive so that we will be able to um, uh, score because at the end of the day offense is about scoring and putting that ball through that net. Okay. Now, um, what excites me the most as a coach? Uh, we're talking about offensively. Eh? What excites me the most as a coach? Okay, my, my answer is transition offense. Okay, that's why it's in topic natin for today. Okay, transition offense why? Because number one, it is one of the easiest ways to score. Bakit? Because a lot of times the defense is not yet ready. Okay, kadalasan after playing offense. Okay, this is what I tell my teams. Okay, now we try to correct every time after. Ang importante again from defense you shift right away to offense. On the other hand, when you play offense, the objective is to shift right away to defense. Okay? Now, ngayon tayo ang offense, yung transition offense, that's something that we need to take advantage of is when the defense relaxes. Okay? Sometimes after a missed shot, ang ginagawa ng depensa, okay, is malungkot dun sa miss niya. Okay? When we call that dead time. When he, when he pauses and does not go back on defense, that's the time to attack. We should be able to take advantage of that. A lot of players, when they, especially when they attack the basket and they feel they get fouled, pero hindi tinawag ng referee, the referee doesn't call it. Okay, a lot of our players, even in the PBA, you watch the PBA, a lot of players umaangal dun sa, sa referee. So in that moment, one, two seconds that they complain to the referees, we should be able again to take advantage of that. That's why, to me as a coach, it's very important is after we play defense, we shift right away to our transition offense. Okay? There's a high chance of scoring early if you do that. And ito yung, this is something that we cannot deny, that playing fast break is really fun. Okay. Dito sa notes ko, sabi, ang nakalagay dito is try to remember during those time when you were playing pickup games. Okay? Nandun lang tayo sa barangay, naglalaro tayo sa labas or dun sa, sa court natin sa labas. Diba? Every time naglalaro tayo, masarap maglaro ng fast break. Okay? We, we look for the outlet passes, diba? yung mga long outlet pass. Okay, we look for layups every time. 
Okay, and then I remember, no, I, I'm not sure if everybody could relate to this, pero marami siguro mas makakaintindi nito. When sometimes when we, we are just playing pickup games, di ba? Minsan, we try to outsprint yung mga kalaro natin. Okay, so mm-hmm. pag offense tayo, we just try to sprint. Tapos for fake tayo, kunyari, tatanggap tayo ng bola. Okay, di ba nakakatuwa? Minsan niloloko lang natin yung kasama natin, yung kalaban natin. But that's exactly the right sa akin. That's, that should exactly be the right mindset when you play fast break. Okay? Is you deceive your defender by sprinting all the way down. Because when you do that, you stretch the defense all the way to the baseline. Okay? So you're not doing that, that just only so you could catch the ball and go for a layup. But at the same time, by doing so, yung depensa, nasi stretch mo sa baseline, and then that opens up something for your teammates. Okay? Tindahan natin, fast break is fun. Kaya dapat, lagi tayo maghanap ng fast break. Okay, now, what are the key points on offense? Okay, again, I mentioned earlier that the most important thing sa opensa is to score. Okay, how? Question is how? How do we score? Okay, we try to score early in transition. Okay, we should play unselfish basketball in transition with tempo and spacing. Okay, these things we could do and correct in practice. Okay, we do transition drills. Us with Blackwater, even my previous teams, uh, Talk and Text, yung mga um, FUNs and Beda, we always spend a lot of time um, running fast break drills from 2 on 0, 3 on 0, all the way to 5 on 0. We do uh, numbers, 2 on 1, 3 on 2. And then my favorite really is the continuous uh, 2 on 1 fast break. Okay, para nasasana yung, yung mga players to score and be aggressive attacking the basket. Okay, when we try to score early in transition, we look for layups and we look for three pointers from look aheads or forward passes or driving kicks. Okay, that's how we score early in transition. We also try to look for early seals by the big men. And yung mga ways of scoring natin ng maaga. Now, we also try to look for late transition opportunities. Okay, what are late transition opportunities? Ito yung when the defense takes away, okay, if the defense successfully takes away the initial attempts, like the layups and the three-pointers. Okay, ito na yung papasok yung, ano, yung, yung late transition opportunities. Now, I consider, um, later on I will show you sa video, mga trailer three-pointers. Okay, when the defense is set, okay, all the way stretch to the baseline, you take away the layup, and then biglang darating yung trailer natin for a three-pointer, I, could, I consider that a late transition opportunities. Okay, when we, hit, when we hit the trailer big, okay, habang kulang yung depensa, I consider that a late transition opportunity. When we offensive rebound, after a uh, fast break layup, okay, that's also a transition opportunity. Okay, so we try to score uh, of those scenarios. Okay, when the defense is scrambling, okay, we attack right away, so fast break, and then they scramble, and we look for one more opportunities or yung mga extra passes natin. That's a late um, transition offense. Okay, so another opportunity. Okay, now. Let me share with you um, some concepts lang, okay, that I've uh, learned um, over the years. There's, there's this coach from Canada, si Kirby she- Coach, uh, Coach Kirby Shep. Um, I mentioned this before in one of my talks. Um, the 6, 12, and 6 concepts, so in 24 seconds na shot clock, hinati niya sa tatlo, the 6, the 12, and the 6. So the first 6, sabi niya, dyan tayo sumubok mag-score ng maaga. And he calls it the uh, my time or the time of the players. Okay, so they discard the player in a way that's a uh, free, that's a uh, free basketball. The first six seconds, and then the next twelve seconds, 
is his time as a coach. Do, doon mo papatakbuhin ngayon yung sistema na gusto niya. And then towards the last six seconds, it becomes the player's time again. So from my time to your time, or uh, well, from your time as a player to my time as a coach, and then go, it goes back to your time as a player. Now you try to create, get some separation, tapos makakuha kayo ng uh, at least clear attempt dun sa basket. Okay, that's the idea of Coach Kirby Shep. And then just last week, okay, if 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 you followed um, Coach Ariel, that was Coach Andre, you know, and uh, uh, yes, Andre, Coach. Yeah, Coach Andre mentioned about the three piece. Mm -hmm. uh, so sa kanya naman, it was ang ang division niya was eight, eight, and eight. Okay, so he talked about pace, poise, and penetration. So ganun yung kanyang um, paghati ng shot clock. But for most of it, okay. Maganda ang concentration nila dun sa early part of the shot clock because that's when you try to score in transition. Now, I want to talk about local coaches. Okay? Two, two coaches that I really appreciate when we talk about uh, transition offense. Number one is Coach uh, Norman Black, okay? especially during his time with uh, Ateneo during those uh, championship years, yung five feet nila. Okay, I really enjoyed watching them. You try to watch the Ateneo games and you, you observe how uh, they attack uh, the fast break. Led by, I remember Kirk Long would really attack the basket. She knew some, she, uh, she la Jai, Jai Reyes. It's, I, I, really liked, enjoy, I really enjoyed watching them when they attack the fast break. Tapos pag walang nangyayari sa fast break, Okay, they were really confident with their offense because they knew that they had post players then from Raba Al Husseini to uh, Justin Chua, Ford Arau. Those are the bigs that they posted up a lot. And then meron pa silang um, small post with Salva and uh, Ryan Buenafe. Another coach that re I really appreciate okay, is Coach Alden Ayo. If you watch him and his teams, Grabe ang uh, pakawala niya, especially sa first uh, seconds of the shot clock. Okay, I, I, one, one coach, I think this is Coach Ryan Betia, sabi niya sa akin, the mentality of Coach Ayurao is to score in seven seconds. Okay, so when I played him in 2016, when they won the championships at DLSU, that's, that's what I remember from Montalbo to Jerome Teng, Okay, Montalbo take si um, Melesio taking transition threes. Okay, so yun yung mga naalala ko. And then now with UST, he has uh, two attack players, si CJ, CJ Cancio and uh, si Mark Nonoy. So that, that's kind of similar to the uh, seven seconds or less of uh, Coach Mike D'Antoni. Uh, especially during his time with the Phoenix Suns. Phoenix Suns. Yeah. So score early in transition, number one. Look for late transition opportunities. You'll, you'll understand a lot of this later on when I show you the video. Number three is to, third key point on offense, is to flow into your uh, secondary offense or you flow into your whatever kind of offense that you have. Again, any kind of offense, pwede nyo itakbo. But as a coach, okay, if, if you could develop some kind of offense that from your primary offense into secondary offense, tuloy-tuloy yung action, you're, you are not resetting the offense. That's the ideal one for me. Okay? Other coaches may say otherwise, but to me as a coach, that's something that I want. That tuloy-tuloy. Quick decisions, okay? When, when, kunyari, when the trailer gets the ball, okay? Kailangan meron na kagad siyang uh, idea kung ano yung dapat niyang gagawin dun sa bola. Okay, if he's gonna attack, if he's gonna go left, gonna go right, go to a specific action right away. Para hindi humihinto. Because every time you, you stop and you reset, okay, you take away two, three, or maybe four seconds of your shot clock. So sa, nasa sayang yun. Okay, and then don't throw that away. Okay, now in your secondary, okay, just make, make sure you make it clear to your players or to your team.
to know what your points of attack are. Attacks are. Okay, so very important. Para magkaroon ng direction yung offense. Number two is to play to the strength of your personnel. So again, a lot of coaches would always tell you to really know the strengths and weaknesses of your certain players para mas madali uh, magpatakbo ng whatever kind of system that you want to, to play. Okay, and finally, to me, which is the most important dito sa, sa secondary offense, is to be able to see the defense and what it is doing to you. Okay, because when you see that, then you, you will know what to do offensively in terms of countering the defense. Okay, so you know, pinaka and as coaches, okay, it is our responsibility to be able to teach that to our players, to be able to go through that in practice so that when they go to the games and they encounter a kind of defense, they will be confident na kung ano man yung gagawin nila, mag, mag work against that kind of defense. Okay, and lastly, uh, last key point on offense is to fight for extra possessions. Always go for the offensive rebounds, okay? Get extra possessions so you have more chance of scoring, okay? You have more chance of scoring, okay? And then when you get the offensive rebound, put some direction to your team. Anong gusto niyong gawin after the offensive rebound if the rebounder doesn't have a putback? Okay, saan kayo pupunta? What is your point of attack right away? Because now, after the offensive rebound, you only have 14 seconds to use para makascore ulit. Okay, so again, it makes it easier for your team if you give them direction in those 14 seconds. Okay, I remember in 2015 when FU won, okay, if, if you guys are familiar with the advanced stats, okay, I was just, back then in 2015, I wasn't really very particular about this okay but uh ngayon lang lately i've been reading a lot nakita ko yung four uh, factors for a su successful offense and yung sinabi nila about effective field goal yung turnovers okay or taking care of the ball offensive rebounding is key and the free throw rate okay i was i, I was surprised to know that during that time pala when we won the championship in 2015 fpu was number 1 in uh, offensive uh, um, rebounding percentage so yun. so that's that's really part of our offense to be able to execute properly okay and to be able to get uh, more chances of scoring by getting offensive rebounds okay now this is my last slide before i go on to uh, our video presentation okay just want to share with you ngayon kaya nakita ko sa inyo kanina yung Gusto ko mangyari offensively, at least the ideas on offense. Now, these are some things that I don't like okay, about offense when my players do this or okay, my, my team does this. Okay, number one. Wait, I go back. Oh, nako, time out. Okay. Okay, number one. Okay, number one pet peeve is really not getting to spots. Okay, pag mabagal tumakbo yung player natin, nagja-jog instead of just going to the wing or to the corner, ayaw natin. If, if, because now they lose advantage or at least they're not trying to get advantage. If the big man does not go to his spot, okay, he does not rim run, okay, yan ang mga ayaw na ayaw natin. Not giving up the ball, yung ball handler natin. If the forward pass is available and he doesn't give up the ball, okay, yan ang mga ayaw. Those are things that we should correct. Or at least to make it clear to our players, ito yung mga gusto natin mangyari. And then if it happens in practices and in, and in games, okay, make sure to correct that. Now, itong ba, dalawang first two na ito, I think the reason behind this really is just uh, simple uh, selfishness. Okay, Sometimes players don't go to their spot because they think that they're going to get the ball anyway. Why, why sprint? Okay, we talked about it earlier. Now we sprint, not just for yourself or ourselves, but more so for, for the team to be able to create other options for the team. Okay, when you don't give up the ball, bakit natin ng bola? Usually on guards. 
right? Because gusto nila to make the play while having the ball. Okay, another pet peeve is cutting the lane uh, of the ball handler. Okay, so when you do that, you delay. Okay, you delay the ball handler. So mas maganda is always cl clearing this. Ano, um, well, later on, uh, I don't have that in video later, but if, if you want me to exp ex expound on this later, so white boy, then I can do that. Number four is not pushing because of secondary. What is this? No offense does not really sprint because they don't want to take advantage of the fast break because they're now thinking about their flow offense or their secondary offense or their set plays. Okay, so again, as a coach, I don't like that because we were not taking advantage of the first six, the first eight seconds of the shot clock. Okay, and lastly, lost advantages. These are advantages usually that we get because of a certain action, but hindi natin na take advantage. We just allowed the defense to recover back. And then, nakarecover na si defense, they take away the advantage. Okay, so ito yung mga pet peeves go on offense. Okay, so... If you have questions, uh, yes. Uh, before coach, we go to the video, uh, may, may yeah. mga questions, coach, that uh, I'll, I'll read out. Uh, coach, I'll, end this, ano, uh, I'll, I'll end the slides. Uh, I'll go back to this. Oh, para, yeah. Para makita ulit yung, ano mo. Uh, I'll go back to Zoom. Yun. You're back. There. I'm coach, back. Uh, what are the reads that you teach <laughs> To know when to attack a primary or go to your secondary, or do you have a set rule of every miss or make, or must, or it's a must that you look for the primary? So from Paul Ramos. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, sa akin, uh, I, I want I want the team to be relentless in fighting in looking for the fast break attacks. So sometimes nga, uh, other coaches or other people would observe sabi nila, end game na, parang rat 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 pa rin daw kami ng rat rat. But again, that's, that's part of the system that we play and part of the philosophy na gusto namin gawin sa team namin. So every time, as long as we get possession of the ball, we make a stop. Sometimes we, we, the, we, does not, we do not make a stop, nakashoot yung kalaban. Right away, we just want our guys to... Oh, nakikita ba ito? Kabila ko. Yes, we're good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So right away from here, after playing defense, I just want my guys to just go to the spots right away. Okay. Big man, after he gets the, the rebound, look for the guard. Sometimes, right away, we make a pass here. Or sometimes we do a banana cut. Okay, depends on how the defense is playing you. So now once we start getting the ball to the guard, right away, ang rule namin is once you see those guys available, just give up the, the forward pass. Give up the forward pass. And then you trust that this guy, whoever gets the ball, will make a good decision with it. Okay, now ang teaching namin Okay, this is how we teach it. Just, just siguro para magkaroon ng konting uh, order. Okay, when you get the ball here, okay, your first thinking is to really try and look to score. Unless your big guy is here. Okay, so that's why ang sabi namin, okay, when the big guy is late, go and look to attack. Okay, but if the big guy gets there early, Okay, make sure we reward them. So, ibig sabihin, don't attack anymore and now look for this guy. Uh, those, th those are just simple uh, mm -hmm. guidelines that we put sa mga teams namin. Uh, but always, ang sa, sa amin is to have that uh, mentality of really attacking in transition. Coach, uh, Coach Lawrence, medyo minamiss daw siyang slide regarding the quote Whatever type of offense uh, execution. Yeah, okay. Uh, half your screen mo daw. Balik ako, Coach. Ha? 
Uh, just, just uh, I think it's the first part. Uh, I think we miss yeah. also that that one. Yeah, I'll try to go back out so that they can see. Uh, share content, screen, start broadcast. Uh, this one. Oh. Keynote. But uh, we can. Uh, after this one, God. Uh, yeah, regardless of type of offense, yeah. Execution, okay. Yeah, yeah. The key is execution and taking, taking advantage, advantage of defensive of breakdowns. So, thank you uh, for the sake of uh, those uh, attendees that uh, wasn't able to see the slide. All right, coach, you can go to the videos. I okay, go back, coach. Uh, yeah, you can go to the videos uh, if you like. Uh, do do Coach, that? could you share again with us the four factors? Uh, oh, effective okay. field goal, free throw rate. What are the other two? Oh, the effective field goal. Well, it, it just means um, just trying to score the effective field goal. Okay, I'm not really a stats guy, but my simple my simple understanding is uh, the effective field goal is just yung, yung rate of scoring yata per for every possession. So. That's number one. Another one is uh, in turnover rate. Okay, so that's protecting the ball. The third one is the offensive rebounding percentage. And the fourth one is yung rate ng free throws. These are the four factors of? Uh, to have a successful offense. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Coach. All right. Welcome. Okay, I'll go to video coach. All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay, na. Okay, coach. Yeah, it's okay. uh, we can see the starting. Okay, let me start. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna show you. These are all um, video clips from our 2015 FU team. This is how we. I just I just want our attendees to, uh, of, to, ha to have a picture of how we uh, transitioned offensively and how we executed offensively. Okay, these are not perfect clips. And for some, uh, that was intentional. So I could uh, 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 make mention of those mistakes, yung mga ayaw natin makita. Okay, so that yung attendees natin would have a siguro, better understanding of the possession. Okay, so when we say look ahead, okay, this is how, how we want it to happen. Okay, as, as soon as we get the rebound, okay, this is uh, Inigo getting the ball. Okay, I want our attendees to focus on, um, on these two guys. Okay, itong dalawa sa harap. Okay, just take a look at how they sprint. Okay, the, the guy in the middle is Sosed, who is a big man. The, five, the, the guy farthest to the ball is Pugoy. Okay, but take a look at how they release. That's how we want. Okay, that's how we want the moment we get the ball right away. Takbo tayo. Okay, it becomes a, kumbaga, it becomes a, a racetrack or a foot race. Okay, right away we take advantage. Okay. At the same time, this is something that we don't like. Okay, uh, if if uh, our attendees could see, Coach Arikita, by ito? The, uh, yes, yes. The, the guy is a half court, malapit sa ano. Sorry, I don't have my cursor, but this this guy in the half court, uh, beside the referee, okay, he stops dun sa gitna. Okay, so now he becomes a ball stopper. So gusto natin tuloy tuloy yung takbo natin, regardless if you get the ball or not. Okay, so that now. We go and look for uh, layups. Okay, uh, I know that's a miss by Pugoy. Okay, but right away this is again an opportunity to go for late uh, transition. Okay, he missed the layup, but we were able to get the offensive rebound and thus a three-pointer by Inigo. Okay, a lot of a lot of coaches would question that. Ano, ah, that shot. Okay, by Inigo. Okay, we get the offensive rebound, he gets to the three-point area. But that's, this is one of the rules that we have uh, when we get offensive rebounds, okay? 
later on I'll discuss this, but we, we try to look for easy putbacks and then we try to look for uh, kick out three pointers. Okay, now as soon as he takes the shot, okay, I just want the, the attendees to focus on the bench. Okay, so yung bench namin, lahat tumataas ang kamay, anticipating a basket. So meaning, that's part of our, they all know that that shot, that kind of shot is accepted in our philosophy. Okay, again, now we take a rebound. And then right away, we dribble push and we sprint to our spots. Probably not the best decision here by taking the shot. Maybe a, a drop pass or a, an alley pass to Pogoy would be uh, a better scenario. But again, after a miss, okay, that big guy crashed the board looking for offensive rebounds. Okay, look ahead pass. Okay, now see the difference in the first clip. Kanina, yung, yung outlet guy namin post in the half court line. Okay, now take a look at the difference with uh, this guy, Sipogoy. So it doesn't have to be in the um, dun sa wing. Okay, so even dito, if you see that the, the look ahead pass is available or the forward pass is available, Okay, right away, just give it to him. Okay, and then make him make a decision for himself. Go anong tingin niya best for, for the offense and for the team. This time, he went to attack. But you see, our big guy is right there for the offensive rebound. Okay, take a look at the corner guy, opposite corner also being available for a kick out three. Okay, what, one, one thing that's, um, okay, later I'll talk about uh, rebounding guards, okay? So again, uh, another thing that we look for, aside from the layups, the by yung three-point attempts namin. So we push the ball for those three-point jumpers okay, that you saw earlier, okay? Another thing that we look for, is okay this one okay take a look at the big guy okay if, if if you would notice our big guy is not the quickest okay big guy not the kumbaga not the most uh, agile of bigs okay but as long as you you sprint okay of, of course he could do better than this okay but as long as you get to your spots okay mas mapapaganda tayo offensively. Okay. Now we scores in transition. Again, if you've noticed, all those actions, we were able to score in the first four to six seconds of the shot clock. Now, this is a different kind of big. There, there, there are two kinds of bigs, huh? Okay, have to understand. Okay, again, dito papasok is knowing your personnel. Okay, early on you saw the our he, he's a six nine uh, big man import. Okay, he does not handle the ball pretty well. Okay, so you would rather have him sprint, rim run. Okay, and then seal. Okay, get to a spot where he's really comfortable do under the basket, and then do na siya humingi ng bola. Now, this is a different kind of big man that we had, okay, si Jose, that could handle the ball. So even, kita nyo siya, at, at this point, sa half court, he was asking for the ball, for that forward pass, okay? Actually, the point guard could have actually given him, given him the ball and then let Jose make a play maybe a, an attack or a driving kick to that corner guy, okay? So as coaches, we should be able to realize what kind of bigs do we have, okay? So like Jose, he could ask for the ball, he could try to attack and maybe uh, create for the offense. Um, yeah, but that was an offensive foul, okay? Just, I just wanted to emphasize on just knowing the personnel and knowing what uh, your your players could do.
Okay, now as long as you do your part, there's always luck. <laughs> Medyo chamba ang tawag dito, but okay. I, I, I just want you to focus on this. Uh, okay, we were playing defense. Okay, we were playing defense. Okay, notice the guy closest to the baseline. Okay, he was boxing out. Okay, when we got the ball, he was the farthest from our basket. Okay, and yet, take a look. He was, because look at the effort that he had in sprinting. Okay, he was the first one to get close to the basket. Okay, if, if as coaches, if we could uh, make our players do this every single time. Okay, just imagine what it will do to your offense, specifically your transition offense. Okay, if they sprint this way, okay, good things will happen. Okay, one good thing that happened, Medyo Chamba, was that uh, big man getting uh, the, the ball for a dunk. Okay, now. If you don't have forward passes, we dribble push. Outside, wala. And Orizu, right away, we try with the board. Tolomia looking ahead, wala mapapasahan. Tolomia. Okay. Tolomia finds an opening though, drives and puts it in with a foul. Six seconds. Okay. Now, what made this thing possible? Coaches, okay, understand this. The moment you drop the ball, the outside. Okay, again, notice how Orizu. two guys got to the corner the board. Right away. Tolomia sprinted to the corner, and that allowed this dribble uh, attack. Finds an opening though, drives and, and puts it in with a foul. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll talk about this. Um, coach, let me talk about this one. Okay, if you notice, a lot of our guards, okay, from uh, the point guard. Tolomia is a point guard. Eh? Okay, so Tolomia is a good rebounding uh, guard. Okay, he's one of the best back then in the UAAP. I'm just hoping that with Blackwater, he does the same thing. Tolomia okay. finds an opening though, drives and puts in it this in possession, with a foul. This is another guard getting the ball. Let's go. He's really one of the best now in the PBA, the best rebounding guards that we have in the PBA, aside from Scotty. Well, the other one is Scotty Thompson. But notice, this is something that we, we've established offensively with our team to be able to recognize if the rebounder is a ball handler, regardless if you're a small guy a point, or a big guy, or even if you're a... Later on, I think we will allow our five guys to bring the ball down. Okay, but, but notice, Pogoy gets the ball, and right away, that's the point guard beside him. Right away, he recognizes that Pogoy is a ball handler. He sprints right away. And right away, now we go to our point of attack. Okay, Pogoy scans the floor. That corner guy is very patient. Okay, he sees an advantage. Pogoy scores of that transition attack. Again, okay, you, gotta, you, you have to give credit to, to the, the defense of Ateneo here because right away they... Again, in, in five seconds, they were in the paint to defend, okay? But still, okay, Tolomia was able to create and this uh, that, uh, assistance the quarter, the time six for ten, which helped them. Okay. Part, part, part of the um, late opportunities that we talked about earlier is this one, okay? So when, when the defense uh, flattens out, Okay, this will be available. Run a 12 to a three zero point. blast. Okay, I just really want to emphasize really why. Okay, why why this is made possible? Okay, if you would notice, Boy, this this guy is just, uh, just has like the in this clip. Ball. Okay, that's uh, that rebound. That's a rebounding guard again. Pogoy gets the rebound. He gives to the point guard. Okay, but notice the three guys that are that are that are releasing to sprint. Those are two big guys and one perimeter player. But take a look at how Warrior. this lead big guy sprints and I'm look, sure Sumasa looks for, him, for an advantage. And then right away, he peels to the point. That point. Okay. Now, at this very point, that's a big guy in the short corner. Okay, that's a small guy that got him temporarily. Okay, because of that, 
yung defense niya is lost in ano ba yan? lost in translation lost, lost in their transition defense okay that's why it made this shot uh, possible for Pogoy actually could have been another extra pass okay and the one more situation dun pa sa corner if they the defense rotated but but, Pogoy, but this is three. perfect because again the this, four guys guy sprinted just, just has the heart of a warrior tried to I'm get sure uh, niya, forward niya. pass and then he, he came out to the corner Pogoy, that's three. when yes! he gets Pogoy, three. transition trailer three opportunities for your small guys Okay, now we like the idea of our big guys bringing the ball down, okay? This is Belo playing the four for us. Okay. So he gets the, the rebound the right away. Gas pedal on defense, as we see right now. Potential three by Indigo in the corner. Okay, yes! Score again. Three, two, three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take Putting a look at this one. Talked about knowing your strengths as players. Okay, Pogoy makes a pass to the a forward pass or a look ahead pass. Yes. We attack, but notice this guy trailing, that third guy coming in in the picture. Okay, instead of going to the paint, because he's our one of our shortest guys. Okay, instead of getting to the paint, he knows his strength as a player. Right away, he sprints to that bailout area. Okay, in the corner. That's why he got the three right now, pointers. Potential uh, three by Indigo in the, the corner. Yes! So those are things that we really need to practice and emphasize dun sa mga players natin. Okay, again, Bello as a four guy tries to bring the ball down. But notice, okay, he was picked up right away. Okay, that's, that's an early stop ball by the defense. This is Ravenna or a guard of Ateneo picking up our four guy. Now, what does this, what, what, does this give us okay it gives us this okay because again you've got two big guys in the baseline defensively okay that gives us an open look in the three pointer okay that's a good shot again for us and the chances are he'll pop one in if you leave him open that wide but this is easy that's one guy you don't want to get in a bellow throws it away bellow guarded by sergeant Coach, clear naman ito, no? Yes, okay. yes, coach. So now, a guard picks him up. Now, because of this ball reversal, okay, five. that's five against four. This is a five against four situation. Ito yung sinasabi natin. When, when, there's a, when we look for defensive breakdowns, this is one of them. Okay? In transition, because of cross matchups, now we get an open look. This is four right yeah, now, partner. Four. It's a four for a three. from the corner, yes! Okay, rebound, get the ball, okay, and then let's have that attack mentality. Okay. Yeah, attendees, coaches, take a look at this one, okay. He gives up a forward pass, okay. Take a look at what the, what the receiver does, okay. He scans the floor, and now he sees four blue jerseys. Okay, again, Ateneo does a good job defensively. Uh, they get to the paint, four against three. So, in a, we don't, we didn't have an advantage here. Okay, so now he gives the ball back to the guard. Okay, but right away, in one or two seconds, okay, when our, the yellow jerseys come in, okay, right away we had the advantage. Okay, five against four, because one defensive guy was late getting back. Okay, so again we took advantage rather than try to set up. Okay, try to set up again. Okay, we attack. So this is something that we developed over the years. Okay, just really look for that uh, and have that attack mentality. Again, forward pass. Okay, try to look forward. Okay, this is our uh, point earlier. If you don't have a transition attack, you flow into your secondary. Okay, so. If you've noticed, okay, after the forward pass and a dribble push, okay, defense is set, okay, no advantage for the corner guy, no advantage for the big, and then right away he gives it to the trailer big, okay. Now it's up to the trailer, okay, it's up to the trailer to decide what to do with the ball. He takes a shot, he goes right, 
and have that uh, ball screen or handoff action with the, the guy dun sa kabila, or he goes back to Pugoy. Okay, and right away we go to our point of attack. Not, not, the, the, not the prettiest of passes, but we were able to get a, uh, an open look. Paren. Okay, so miss basket, a made basket, we get right away to our flow. Okay, and not try to reset. Okay, a lot of times, okay, teams would always call set plays. Okay. As a coach, ako, I, ayaw ko masyado. Okay, I'd rather oh, go into our unless it's a dead ball. Lasala by one. Unless it's a dead ball Eight situation, 14, then I, the first I, I, might, I might call a set. Colombia from out. The last week, uh, Coach Andre by one. mentioned about uh, having an offense that you could run against the man in the zone. Okay, this is something that you could do. Okay, so after a forward pass, okay. Ideally here, okay, I, I would rather have this ball handler, Tolomia, reverse the ball right away to that big guy. That is a shooting big, so that could be a trailer three. Okay, at, right at this point, we, we didn't know yet if they were on a zone or on man. Okay, but I think the best scenario in this clip was to reverse the ball, look for three-pointer. Okay, if that elbow guy committed to him, that's a one more pass to one of our best shooters, si Trinidad, dun sa corner. So right away, he could have gotten a three-pointer dun sa corner. By one. Okay, but he asked for the ball screen. In the first okay. quarter. So now we flow, but he had an open look. But we, we right away flowed into our from outside. zoom. Yes, it's good. Let's try, as coaches now, let's try to have um, an action where you could uh, run it against man-to-man -man or against zone so that it takes away at least the, the, the reading part of the players or the you know, hesitation ng, ng players natin. I just, I just put some press break uh, action because uh, I, I just want uh, same concepts. Okay, from, from transition attack to your flow offense, to your press break attack, to your zone. Okay, as long as you put in concepts that your team would easily understand, execute, then kahit anong klaseng depends ay bigay sa atin, dapat nakatakbo tayo. Now, uh, POA stands for uh, point of attack. Okay, the other day I had this uh, webinar and then one coach mentioned about, uh, uh, well, a coach from Cebu, he asked me about, Coach, paano ito? Kasi sometimes when, when we bring the ball down, uh, young players would right away go to a ball screen, okay? Instead of, you know, running some action first, okay? Uh, as coaches, we like that, di ba? Yung kumbaga, meron mo na tayong konting action before we get, to a ball screen, okay? But dur during this time, when we were playing in 2015, okay, against Atene and later on against UST, okay, we knew, well, well, because of our scouting, we knew what kind of defense they were doing. So it didn't matter to me as a coach. If I could go right away to my point of attack after crossing half court, I go to my point of attack right away. And this time, okay, they were aggressive on the ball screen. So Okay na sa akin yun. I, I'll take that as long as my players knew how to counter the aggressive uh, defense of the ball screen. So, yeah, if, if you would notice right away after Tolomia crosses the half court, okay, right away we set that ball screen. Okay, and then we make a decision right away. Okay, as, again, as long as your guys are in the right spots, okay, it's not really hard to... Uh, to counter counter the defense. Okay, why why were they uh, being aggressive on Tolomia? I, I think during this day, game he was uh, just in the first half he scored 15 points. Eh? So Seguro Ateneo decided to be aggressive on him. Okay, so this is what we always tell our players: if if they become aggressive on you and you 
force two guys to defend you, okay? You become a facilitator offensively. So it's very important that your players or your player accept that. So ko aggressive sa kanya, and then he forces two guys to defend him. The only thing he needs to do is really to give up the ball and make another guy uh, make the decision dun sa offense. So that's a good counter attack. Ball screen right away. Okay. Yeah. So again, that's an open, that's an open shot for the offense. Okay. If you would notice, okay, this is already a good shot for us because he was shooting a, at a high uh, percentage, but there was another guy uh, open if he made the extra pass. Okay, point of attack right away. And then big guys making, making uh, the right decisions with the ball. Okay. Earlier I talked about having direction dun sa offensive rebound. Okay. This is okay. This is our sequence offensively. Once we get the offensive rebound, if you think you have the advantage, you're close to the basket, and you are in a scoring opportunity, go ahead and score right away. The advantage now over anyone. Okay, if not, our next option is to go for a kick out and look for a three-pointer. Catch and shoot three right away. Okay, pag wala, and just know that you could end up with a ball screen or whatever mismatch that you have. Okay, so if you've noticed, when we set this ball screen, nine seconds a shot clock. Okay, that gives us enough time. Okay, that gives us enough time to get an open look. Okay, just make sure Coaches, look at number 15. We were not really spaced out well. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always I, I always tell my players is the other guys, okay, kumbaga ang hari, okay, ang hari is the one with the ball. Okay. All the other four guys should be reacting to what the ball handler does with the ball. If he penetrates, if, if he penetrates, make sure you're in the right spots. Okay. When he has the ball, make sure you give him space so that he could operate. Okay. In this uh, clip, you know, 15, okay, he, he wasn't spaced out, okay, he should be closer to me, okay, and let our point guard uh, create for the offense. This is still a good shot, okay, good shot on a single tag, okay, he didn't have a good scoring opportunity, but right away, okay, we were looking for a three-pointer in that corner. Okay, but these players were, they recognized that, okay, take a look, okay, now the guy who got the rebound got to the corner, pumunta siya, and then now he spaces out, because he recognized that we had the advantage on the penetration here, okay, so it was very clear that uh, after the offensive rebound, we had direction, so it's some point na, uh, Diniscuss ko kanino. Make sure, coaches, that we have rules uh, after an offensive rebound so that uh, may direction yung opensa natin in the 14 seconds that we have. Okay, just a couple of, uh, no, um, okay, the last two minutes of the video, just a couple of, um, ito, just set plays that we ran. Okay, and I just want to show you how we countered uh, the defense thrown at us. Diba sabi ko kanina that we should, as coaches, we should be able to teach that to our players. Okay? This play ends up with the middle ball screen. We force the uh, man of the screener to help out on the, on the small guy. So now, okay, that gives us an open three-pointer, top of the key. Okay, he makes his three-pointer. That's why uh, they try to be aggressive after that play. Same play, okay, a back screen, full reverse, another back screen, okay, into a ball screen, okay. But this time, take a look, defense becomes aggressive, okay. I just want you to focus on the, the guy, okay, setting the screen, okay. Now, he shorts roll, he, short, he short rolls, 
Okay, get he created some separation from those two guys. Now we have a four against three advantage here. Okay, again, as long as we're spaced out and we make the right reads, okay, we score. Same play. Okay, back screen to a ball screen. Okay, defense is aggressive. Okay, another way of countering is, okay, instead of hitting the short roll, we hit a forward pass. Okay, or we pass ahead to the next guy. And now that guy with the ball makes a decision. If you've noticed, there's two against one dun sa weak side. The guy rolling to the basket and the guy spaced out. Okay, so now it's a decision the, the ball hander needs to make now. Kung saan niya ipapasa. Okay. Defense, actually defense does a great job uh, taking away the, the skip pass. That's why he was able to counter it on a penetration. Okay, again, pass, pass. We wanted the pass, pass situation, but the second pass happened after the penetration. Okay, another set play was a weave play that uh, we were running in 2015. Just a simple, this is just a simple weaving action. Uh, I think we copied this from probably the Chicago Bulls then or uh, the Boston Celtics. So it's just a, a weaving action, two, three weaves into a ball screen. But now, just, just take, take note of how we, we react to the ball. Defense switches on this swing ball screen. So now we know that we have an advantage in Saposte. Okay? Again, take a look at how the defense uh, fronts him. Take a look at how that opposite big guy flashes. Okay, forget about this guy. Top sa ano sa left. What is this? The left side of your screen. This is the left side of the screen. Again, he's not spaced out well. He should space out uh, near the sideline. Okay, that's that's that 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 would be the perfect uh, spacing for us. So that if we can make a direct pass to the post guy, we reverse to the shooting big and then look for this uh, high-low. Okay. Just, I'm just showing this so that at least our attendees will have a, a clear picture of how the, our offense back then reacted to, the, to what the defense was uh, throwing at us. Okay, again, that weave action play. Okay, okay. this is a different option of the play. Okay, but it becomes a five out. Again, knowing the personnel that you have. Okay, this, we, we had five guys who could shoot from the outside. Okay. This is Escoto, who now plays for San Miguel in the PBA. Okay, we want him spreading. Okay, now it becomes an advantage for us. Okay, open look. Okay, again, that's a high percentage shot for, uh, for, for our offense. Okay, one, one concept. Okay, that we, we need to teach our team is uh, really giving up the ball on scrambling plays, okay, defensive scrambling plays. Okay, that's why us with, with our teams, okay, aside from really spending a lot of time with our transition attacks, okay, we do a lot of uh, shooting drills with uh, one more situation. So one more, like four corners, we're, we're four guys spreading, two guys in the corner, two guys in the slot. Okay, just make making extra passes. Some some some. Uh, there, there's one drill that, that that they call the Spurs or San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs one more drill. Okay, we do that also. Okay, so defense scrambles. Now we get an open look in the corner. It's a shooting big big again. Okay. Now in ending, I just want to show you again just a few clips about of our yung mga pet peeves ko nga. Okay, not giving up the ball. Okay. The, the perfect okay, scenario here, I think, is really just making a pass to the, the guy to his left. Okay, maybe a three-pointer. Okay, maybe number 15 gets a three open three-pointer. Or if you would notice the defense, Defense is scrambling here. That's a big guy, okay? The, the biggest guy of the white team closing out with a small guy namin sa corner. So if 
if only he made that pass to the corner, we could have probably gotten a three-pointer or, or a counter, an attack counter here. Okay. So he decides to attack. But he acknowledges, okay, that's very important, coaches, for your players. If they commit a mistake, okay, they acknowledge it. Okay, ibig sabihin, alam nila kung ano yung mga gusto natin at mga hindi natin gusto mangyari. Okay, another pet peeve that I have, okay, is this one. Okay, again, take a look at number 15, just asking for the ball here. While two or the other three guys are sprinting, he was right here. Just asking for the ball. Okay, he, he is the one stopping the attack or the offense. Take a look. He was guarded by this guy in the elbow. Okay, he was actually the one who stopped the penetration. Okay, imagine if he sprinted to that corner, that's probably an attack by the ball hander. Would have been an easy scoring opportunity for us. Okay, now we were forced to play okay, our flow offense, but still okay, a good shot for us. Okay, we were still able to uh, get an open look, an open jumper. Okay, this is the last clip, and I talked about uh, lost advantages. Okay? okay, this is part of our flow offense. We okay, take a look, drag screens. This is a double drag screen that we run off of our uh, transition attacks. Okay, we transition push, and then notice two, two of our big guys right away setting that uh, ball screen or drag ball screens, okay? Okay, when, when I say loss advantage, okay, take a look at one guy rolling to the basket and take a look at one guy short rolling to that free throw area. Okay, right at this very point, the ball handler already has two guys on him, meaning two guys already committed to him defensively. And the best thing to do here was just to give up the ball to that guy in the free throw, okay, Jose. Okay, and then trust him that he could make a pass. Well, uh, that he could make uh, a good play here, okay? So could have been, okay, if he made the pass, take a look. The roll guy is now close to the baseline. Could have been, uh, let's just picture that the guy in the free throw gets the ball. Okay, that's already a three against two situation. So could have been a shot for him or an attack or maybe a high-low pass to that guy under the basket or maybe a ball reversal. If that blue jersey from the corner rotates to him, then maybe we get a three-point shot. So yun yung mga ayaw natin when, when simply by not giving up the ball, we lose, a, we lose the advantage and then we give the defense a chance to recover. Okay, now because of that, look what happens here in this clip. Okay, we were forced, okay, to take this kind of shot. And this is something that I'm sure all of us coaches would not want. Okay, this, this, this step back uh, challenge shot. Okay, that's a, well, that's a bad shot for us. Okay. Okay, coach, that's, uh, that concludes my, um, my very good, uh, video, very good yeah, presentation. My video presentation. I, I just hope. Uh, very clear, coach. Yeah, clear. Yung, uh, we, 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 have, uh, we have Coach Olsen to thank for that. All right. Um, coach, uh, there's some questions uh, from our uh, attendees. Um, from Bayani, uh, just an observation nowadays. It seems okay to take three, uh, three point shot and transition <clears throat> offense with uh, three offensive players versus one or two defensive players. Years ago, um, you get uh, coaches get mad at that. So, uh, what's your take on that? So, your early I, three. I, again, again. Uh, as as long as. Uh your players or your team would know uh, what kinds of shot are best for them, for, for them individually, number one, for them individually, and then number two is for the team. 
Okay, because sometimes uh, what's good for you individually is not good for your team. So those are two things that you need to really accept and recognize. So pag naintindihan nila yon, and again, sabi ko kanina when I was showing you uh, some clips, when we took an early three-pointer from the corner or maybe at the trailer three, taking a three-pointer, if you've noticed our bench already standing up and putting their, di ba, ganun tayo, di ba, pag three, ibig sabihin, that was the kind of shot that was uh, um, available and acceptable to us as a team. So sa akin personally as a coach, as long as my players are capable and I think uh, it was the right decision, then sa akin go ahead and take it. Lalo na ako pumasok. Yes, magsiselling. <laughs> <laughs> if if uh, from JM Pilares, uh, if spacing is compromised, what adjustment uh, do the players do? Any backup scenarios? Oh, oh, compromise is spacing. Hi, Coach JM. Uh, again, uh, the first step is really to make your players understand about spacing. If if they have a clear understanding of that, then for sure. Um, Yung comprom- the compromised spacing will be limited. Now, if that happens, okay, just make sure we teach our players to learn and adjust. Okay, I, 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 there was one European uh, uh, video seminar that I was watching, and sinabi nga niya, back then, maybe five, ten years ago, yung spacing na pinag-uusapan natin, ano lang eh, uh, uh, hindi ganun ka kaluwag okay but because of the kind of basketball that is being run now parang kulang na yung spacing kung pwede ka nang tumayo dun sa sa sideline talaga near the sideline mas maganda yung sinasabi na just to add up to the spacing that we want okay so importante is your players reacting again to the ball if right away he sees okay you you only have okay you you only have two options eh. coach I, i'll just show uh, So, let's say may dalawa tayong tao dito. Okay? Dati kasi yung spacing na dito. Okay? Pag nandito ang bola, parang okay na eh, no? Okay? But now, most coaches would require their players to even space out palayo pa dun sa bola to give mm-hmm. the ball handler more more space to operate. Okay? So, minsan, kunyari, nabigyan ka ng ganyan, Coach Jen, nabigyan tayo ng ganyang situation and then the ball handler is here. Okay? And then the defense is Uh, defending him this way. So, ibig sabihin, right away, you recognize that spacing is compromised. So, what could we do here? Either this guy goes and then this guy gets to the corner or easily this guy allow him uh, to make a, a decision for himself and for the team to just clear through so that now you're left with just two guys on this floor. Then we go back to the spacing that uh, we like. All right. Um, so uh, there's some questions on you, Joe. I think you were able to answer, but just your rule uh, on allowing big man to shoot. So what's your uh, take on that? Big man to shoot uh, that early three. Uh, I'm not, as a, personally, I'm not against that. Okay, again, uh, as long as my, my players are capable of doing that. Uh, before the four guys uh, lang ina allow una hindi well the the small guys lang and then eventually you know the four guys we had to spread four now we have spread five okay so even if it's an early three pointer by the four or the five guy to me as long as uh, it's acceptable to the philosophy that we have then yeah okay in sa akin I, i think it could be an advantage uh, for us All right. Uh, coach, do you believe defense wins championship or offense? <clears throat> oh, so like your oh, well. 2015 when uh, FEU played the LSU in final final four game three. Well, I yeah, be, be, because uh, of course I emphasize a lot on offense uh, in this webinar because that's a topic that was assigned to me. Well, actually, I, it wasn't really assigned to me. See, Coach Ariel asked me if what, what I could discuss. So that's something that, uh, again, it's close to my heart. That's why I share this with you. But if you've noticed in the video clips that I've uh, no, 
uh, showed you earlier. Okay, there were a lot of, well, the clips that I showed you started from the way we play defense. Okay, so that was really intentional. So, but kaya lang hindi ko na explain kanina eh, because hahaba yung explanation ko. But I wanted sana to explain that a lot of our transition attacks came from stops. Okay, we were able to stop, get possession of the ball, and even for some clips that I showed, mga post doubles namin. Okay, and we were aggressive defending the, the post guy, scrambling, getting rebounds, and then before we went to attack on offense. So yes, yeah, I agree that uh, defense wins championship. But again, uh, there's always a balance between defense and offense. So it's, it's always best, really, if you could defend and at the same time score. Uh, from Mario, there a time that you have changed your system offensively? And defensively, because of the materials you have or the personnel you have? Yes, uh, it always changes. Okay, again, uh, the only constant thing in the world is change. So, uh, even with the system that the systems that we run, the philosophies that we have, it's, uh, it, it continuously changes. Uh, again, kanina pinagusapan natin I, from, from motion offense to triangle. Diba? Lahat ng, ano, lahat ng sistema halos na daanan ko. And uh, it, it, it was really dependent on the, the players that we had, the personnel that we had. So again, I think that was, uh, well, one of the coaches that we had here, yun ang sinabi niya, di ba? Parang sabi, okay, of course, if you have Junmar Fajardo, bakit? Diba? Ba't ka mag-dribble drive? And you take advantage of Junior Fajardo. Diba? Pag wala kang Junior Fajardo then, and you have penetrators, then might as well take advantage of that. So again, it all depends on the people that we have. All right. Um, can you share a uh, transition drill uh, from uh, Coach San, Sandy Grumo? So what, uh, your, uh, what transition drill do you uh, the, uh, ano daw? Run. One of my, my favorites, uh, again, I mentioned earlier the two on two. <clears throat> this is para medyo competitive na to, okay? This is a continuous two on two drill. Okay, two on two drill um, where you divide your team into two groups, okay? Para medyo competitive. So let's say you have, um, let's let's say you have this is how you start the drill, okay? So my dalawa kang offensive player, and then uh, you have two defensive players here, okay? And then you have so yung X natin, this team always attacks this way. So meron ka ng mga nakabang dito. Maybe you have a line here, yeah? May mga line ka dito, and then you have your line here again. So this is just the the simple idea, okay? This. Uh, offense, palagi yung maatake dito. Ito, lagi po maatake dito. So, so continue. So, let's say we do this for, for straight three, between three to five minutes. Again, depends on the number of people that we have and depends on uh, the level uh, na kinocoach namin. So, again, pag college, kahit mas mahaba, mas maganda. Mas kaya nila. Pag PBA, mas, maikli, mas maganda rin sa kanila. Okay? So, Basically, this is just, uh, ano, okay? So we attack two on two. Okay, miss or mid. Yung mga naka-next dito sa baseline, sila kagad ang atake dito. And then whoever attack, itong dalawang opensa, after they go and attack on offense, they will be the ones sprinting back on defense. Okay? So bakit favorite ko to? Because, again, it teaches my offense, okay, to shift to defense right away. So walang dead time. Okay? As against three, ibang drills na three on two, minsan after mo mag-offense, out ka na eh. Okay? And then your group comes in. So with this drill, okay, ang pumapasok offensively are the guys on the baseline. And then yung umupensa, sila ang babagsak sa defense. And maganda, magang, magandang drill ito na takbuhan lang ng takbuhan. And a lot of times, you are presented with a two-on-one situation because that other guy is still trailing. Okay, so ibig sabihin, pag hindi ka naka-take advantage, it, it ends up with a two-on-two. Two two. 
and then you, you lose your advantage offensively. All right, uh, Dr. Eddie, there's more questions uh, on top. Uh, Coach, I'm, I'm interested in, in hearing your answer for this question. It's from Matt Salem. Coach, how do you convince players to buy into a system? Oh, it takes time. You know, uh, making players buy into your system, it really takes time. <clears throat> uh, it's a process. Okay? I, I'm a coach who really believes in, in the process. Uh, alam ko hindi nangyari overnight, but it takes a lot of really explaining to them. Kailangan makita nila talaga yung benepisyo nung ginagawa mo. Once they start seeing that, and then later on, we makikita nila na even sila individually makikinabang. Okay? That's when you start uh, uh, getting positive responses sa kanila. And then slowly, hindi, hindi talaga mangyayari overnight. Eh. So like, like for us, uh, yung mga players namin na dalawang taon lang sa sistema noon sa FEU, uh, hindi pa namin sila totally na-transform. So it took them longer. So ibig sabihin, the longer they were in, this, in the program, mas napadali sa amin yung pagbenta sa kanila ng sistema. And it also helped that we had the older players help us as coaches sell the system, the philosophy, and the program to the newer players that we had. Coach, uh, this question is from Emerita. He asks, uh, what are you excited the most about uh, with, Black, with your Blackwater stint? And who, who are you interested in coaching uh, that you haven't had a chance to coach before? Thank you. Oh, hello, Emerito. Uh, well, siguro, the, the thing that excites me the most about Blackwater is the challenge of coaching them. Uh, again, si Coach Ariel mentioned earlier na um, previously, hindi ganun kaganda ang placing namin. Uh, but uh, with, with, uh, with the management that we have and the coaches and we, that we have and yung mga players that we are slowly Okay, hindi pa ideal yung lineup na meron kami, but we believe that slowly we, we are putting in the ingredients. Uh, yun, that, that, that what makes it more exciting. Uh, yung, yung challenge of building it and eventually making it perform. Uh, hopefully, uh, makapagpakita kami ng maganda uh, dito sa Blackwater. Uh, nakasuot pala ako ng Blackwater shirt, Coach Ariel. Siyempre, dapat. <laughs> <laughs> Magalitan tayo yan. Ayan, there's some questions on top, Coach. Uh, to Dr. Eddie, can you ask, Coach? Uh, Coach Nash, uh, despite the age of Maurice Shaw, what made you decide to draft him uh, second overall in <clears throat> this past draft? Again, it... Uh, it's easy, it's easy actually to get a small guy, a talented small guy. And uh, uh, over the years, that's something that a lot of teams did. Okay? But in reality, there's an excess of uh, talented guards. So hindi, ka, hindi naman ganun, hindi ganun uh, kalayo yung mga players na pumapasok. Though they are talented, but hindi ganun kalayo dun sa mga meron din naman tayo. So uh, we, we felt that though it was a, a gamble because si Maurice just turned 35, Maurice Shaw just turned 35, we felt it was a gamble, but we also felt that it was a gamble worth taking because of his size. So again, life is about taking chances. Eh. Pag hindi tayo sumugal, then baka wala tayong magandang uh, makita. So, yun lang yun. That's, that's, the, base, that's the basis of, uh, of our decision. And we're, we're really looking forward to having him perform well for, for the franchise. Yes. All right. Um, I, I know, Dr. Eddie, you've been egging to ask your questions. 
So before we wrap this up and uh, coach, sabi mo hindi ka tatagal lang one hour, eh. one hour thirty na tayo. So we oh, have uh, five minutes. So um, Doc Teddy, shoot. Coach, with your time in the UAP and in the PBA and with the national team, could you kindly give me five qualities that a basketball coach should possess in order to be successful? Thank you very much. I, I'm, thanks, Doc. Uh, Doc Ted, I, I was ready for your uh, question because I've been following our webinar, Lama watching all the other coaches, and I know that you would ask me this question. Actually, I have my notes here. Huh? <laughs> okay, number one. Okay, it, uh, a coach should be both a teacher and a student. Okay, um, teacher, kasi dapat knowledgeable tayo, kaya natin ituro sa, sa mga players natin. But at the same time, we also have, we also need to be a student, meaning open tayo sa mga new learnings. Especially now that uh, we have a lot of webinars, tsaka mga seminars. Kami, we, we see to it, di ba, Coach Ariel, we go to, different countries so that we could learn uh, different kind of basketball. So eventually it becomes an advantage when you learn new things. So you should be both a, a teacher and a student. Okay. Second quality is you have to be dependable. Okay. When you say dependable, you have to be reliable as a coach, especially uh, for most of us, uh, ako naging assistant din ako before. So, pag may hiningi sa akin yung coach, okay, hindi pwedeng may rason tayo palagi. Eh, coach, na hindi ako naka-download, hindi ako, hindi ako naka-edit kasi nawalan kami ng kuryente. Or, so, we can't give our head coaches excuses or we can't give our management excuses. Diba? Ang importante sa kanila is for us to be able to deliver what uh, they asked for. So, so as a coach, I think that's one quality na kailangan ma-develop natin. We should learn how to be dependable as a coach. We have to stay ahead of our head coach. Okay, number three is you have to be trustful. Okay, empowering. Uh, I think that's one quality that I have. Also, a quality that I've learned from Coach Chot, uh, Reyes being under him for so many years. Uh, I... Hindi ko ina-embrace lahat ng trabaho eh. Okay, it also helps me. Okay? I I see to it, I make it a point that all all the other coaches, they have something na special na ginagawa nila. So that's part of really trusting them with the work. So I I empower them with drills, I empower them with uh, videos and kung ano man maiisip namin. So uh, as a coach kailangan nakakapag-empower tayo at saka nakakapag-trust tayo sa mga tao na meron tayo. The fourth is you have to be relational. Uh, that's me as a coach. I think it's if there's one uh, ano ba, verb na uh, ano sa akin, it's, it's really being relational. Um, uh, at the end of the day, after all the X and O's, di ba, it, it boils down to uh, building relationships with uh, your players and your teams, with your building relationship with management, building relationship with your co-coaches and your players and whoever is part of your team. So, kailangan medyo relational ka. Lagi kang may concern doon sa mga tao na nakakasalimuha mo. Okay, and lastly, okay, sometimes I struggle with this. Okay, a coach should be relaxed and calm. Okay, I know that uh, that one that's one characteristic that I have. Medyo tahimik kam, pero minsan hindi nakakapagpigil, lalo na pag, pag yung mga referees nandiyan na tumatabi sa akin. Okay, so uh, yun lang. Minsan I have to, I have to really con have to, need to have control over my emotions when it comes to the, to the referees. So yeah, those are the five qualities, Dr. Ted, uh, na, na list ko. I have a suggestion for number five that might help you. Yes, yes. Since you like to empower and trust your assistant coaches, you can assign one of them to pull you away if they feel that. <laughs> or, let, or, or let them uh, no, make, make the, all the complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Don't, don't worry, coach. Our owner will do the complaining for you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Coach, again, I'd like to thank you personally for doing this. Not just only for, of course, for Blackwater, but for um, coaches that uh, attended. And I'm sure, uh, isa ka sa mga blockbuster eh, na, ano, na, na maraming attendees na umattend. And I'm sure uh, all of them are uh, very um, glad na you've shared your uh, experience and your journey as uh, a coach and uh, of course this topic is uh, very close to you uh, nakita naman nila atin na you, you're able to explain very well and uh, just uh, some parting words coach and siguro you can share with them what we are doing with Blackwater during this uh, pandemic and uh, you know we, we're all hoping that it's gonna be over soon we're hoping and praying that uh, basketball will start soon but what have you been doing with Blackwater and uh, uh, some parting words for our uh, attendees. Yeah, um, siguro with regards to Blackwater, again, we're, we're all limited, uh, not just us, but all the other teams I know, from, from different leagues, different uh, schools, different uh, teams. Uh, sa, atin, sa atin sa Blackwater, we, yeah, we just make, make sure that we do some work Uh, with our players, we do a lot of uh, Zoom workouts, uh, strength conditioning uh, workouts. Uh, there are times we we uh, we do some skill work, uh, some some with the ball, but again, very limited. Uh, we're really hoping that soon we could start working out. Kahit na in in small groups, we could start assembling our teams. But again, after of course after the 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 government makes its announcement, and the league makes its announcement. Na na pwede na ulit. Um, yeah, sa mga attendees natin, uh, thank you for for uh, logging in. Uh, thank you for logging in and just uh, listening and having an open uh, open mind to to the idea. Um, Please take advantage of what we have now. Uh, not, not very ideal. It's not very ideal because of the pandemic. But um, again, just make do with what we have. Uh, right now, all the webinars are available. Let's try to uh, take advantage of it. Uh, try to learn some more. Uh, again, every day for sure you will be able. You will be able to learn something new. Okay, so hanapin natin kung ano yun. Spend time with the family. Take advantage of it. This is uh, something that uh, won't happen again uh, for a long time. Yung, time. yung oras natin ngayon sa pamilya natin na 24 hours kasama natin. Um, and maybe lastly, stay safe. Uh, stay at home. Tulungan natin ang gobyerno para uh, hindi tayo makadagdag sa, sa problema. Uh, support Blackwater. Uh, ito sa kayong ano, oh, yung uh, yung uh, mga ginagawa ni la Coach Ariel, Doc Ted. Uh, again, thank you for uh, Doc Ted, Coach Ariel, thank you for having me uh, tonight. Uh, Nag-enjoy ako. I, I really thought I could not uh, uh, speak for mga 45 minutes. Uh, humaba pala ako. <laughs> no? <laughs> Uh, thank you. Salamat sa pagkakataon again. Thank you, Coach, for sharing your time and expertise, Coach. Thank you. Yes, I uh, would like to give a shout out uh, to Coach uh, Christopher um, Araneta from Davao. Um, and shout out to his uh, Crossing Bayabas National High School basketball team, cadets and girls team. So, so keep on, uh, you know, uh, staying in shape and, uh, you know, okay, uh, Keep on uh, being busy. Coach Nash, even the professionals are uh, doing it uh, in this time of pandemic, doing workouts on your own or uh, doing uh, Zoom workouts. And those from mga taga Dabo City daw, uh, para sa uh, cluster war, di po Kong Polong Duterte, dali na si uh, cluster for Christopher Araneta. Keep safe and uh, stay home. Again, uh, joining us at 8 p.m. is uh, the Ageless Wonder. So Asi Taulava will join us for Q&A. Um, of course, it's an unbelievable journey of three decades playing professionally. Uh, started in the 90s 
uh, 2000 and 2010 to oh four na pala four decades in 2020 he ends up um, playing this year hopefully um uh, um start the MP base so his journey and um uh kumustahan with the uh, paling asi taulaba And uh, again, Doc, thank you for joining us, Coach, Coach Nash. Thank you so much. Quick break, coaches. We'll see you at 8 p.m. Again, stay safe. God bless. Bye. Coach, thank, thank you. you. Salamat, Coach. Galing.